there's a certain faction of, of the American voters, a lot of them are Republican voters, who've kind of memory hold it in some ways. Mm -hmm. And they're, they've, uh, they, they also kind of got sick and tired of Democrats calling it a coup, calling it an insurrection. And f y there was a certain mentality of like, look, we know January 6 was bad. You guys don't have to overreg it. We all saw what happened there. And we all saw it with our own eyes. So just kind of pump the brakes a little bit. Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk with the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering and where the story's going next. I'm Sarah Bedford, and I'm here with Managing Editor Chris Sirvein. And Chris, there was an interesting poll out of the Washington Post this week that showed voters in swing states are very concerned about threats to democracy, but they actually trust Donald Trump more than Joe Biden to address those threats. What did you make of that poll? Yeah, I thought that poll was really uh, quite intriguing and fascinating. And um, the it, it ultimately, I think, sparked a debate in this office about what people consider to be democracy. Um, and Democrats and Joe Biden would say the, the reason that he campaigns on it is you take a look at January 6th and what happened there and therefore he is the guardrail against uh, anything bad that might have happened that day. We all know January 6th was, was a terrible day but um, it, it feels like the messaging isn't quite working for him there so democracy can then mean a whole bunch of different stuff to different people and I think uh, my perspective on whether Trump is seen as kind of this, this standard bearer for it. And it sounds crazy to say that sort of three years ago, you would never have said that. Mm -hmm. But democracy can mean uh, bureaucracy for a lot of people. And that means the Democrats and Joe Biden, the administration going into your home, taking stuff like your gas stoves away from you, mm -hmm. messing around with your family, uh, uh, schools, learning. Um, it really kind of government interference. I suppose it goes back to the, the Reagan days of, of big government and is big government helping you or is it, uh, is, it, is it curtailing you and kind of telling you what to do? And I assume that is part of the reason that Trump has fared better there. It could also mean uh, on matters of national security uh, when it comes to the wars uh, abroad with Israel and with Ukraine and uh, the threats of Russia and China. I think Joe Biden has been perceived to be a rather weak president on that front, whereas Donald Trump, uh, whether you believe it or not, has this kind of idea of him as being this strong leader who may be unpredictable and, and the likes of Putin uh, might not want to kind of tangle with. So, yeah, I think it was really, really fascinating that he's come out on top there. You mentioned that the threats to democracy is something that the Joe Biden campaign has tried to frame around January 6th. I think there's no question that January 6th rhetoric has sort of lost its edge in the past three years. Do you think that's because of the passage of time? Or do you think that's because voters have maybe contextualized January 6th since then uh, against the lawfare campaigns against Donald Trump, the DOJ throwing the book at those protesters, but not protesters in favor of left-wing causes? I mean, what do you think is caused that to fizzle out? Well, I think there's a few factors at play there, and you've touched upon them there. First off, it, it, people have incredibly short memories, and the, and the overall mentality for most people is, what have you done for me lately? Mm -hmm. January 6 was, was three and a half years ago now. In today's world, that is practically a lifetime ago. And it's really important to remember what happened then and how dangerous it was. For a lot of people, they might think, I'm kind of sick and tired of relitigating this. I would rather just kind of move on. I think that's kind of why Trump's been able to succeed in some ways. Some, there's a certain faction of, of the American voters, a lot of them are Republican voters, who've kind of memory hold it in some ways. Mm -hmm. And they're, they've, uh, they, they also kind of got sick and tired of Democrats calling it a coup, calling it an insurrection. And f y there was a certain mentality of like, look, we know January 6 was bad. You guys don't have to overreg it. We all saw what happened there. And we all saw it with our own eyes. So just kind of pump the brakes a little bit. And I think also, as you, you rightly allude to, all these court cases against Donald Trump, uh, which at the very least seems to suggest a sort of Department of Justice overreach. And you can believe what you want there. Is it all designed to get him off the ballot? Is it is it coordinated? Or did he just do a lot of kind of stupid stuff that actually there 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 is cause to go after after him? But again, it, it all kind of goes back to the optics there on they're out to get him. And again, that's a sort of threat to democracy. And I think ultimately, 
looking at figures that have come out uh, as the, the today, later on, there'll be the debate, they'll be talking about it. If you look at, uh, we wrote an article that was based on Google Trends and the Associated Press had done a, a team up of, of the issues that voters care about. Democracy was nowhere near the top of it. At the, as things stand right now, healthcare was the number one. And then people being in debt and the economy and crime, democracy didn't even crack the top five. Uh, and I think it's a really sort of difficult thing f to campaign on because democracy can mean different things to different people. Uh, whereas healthcare, you know, am I getting appropriate healthcare? Uh, is my car being broken into? Do I have enough money in my wallet? Those are kind of very real things that you can campaign on and point at and say, the other guy's wrong on that or I'm, r I'm right on that. Do you think that Joe Biden is at risk of putting all his eggs in this democracy basket? You know, if you if you really had to ask what he's running on, that's that's the only clear answer, right? Um, is his campaign too defined by that issue that, as you say, is is not really top of mind for voters? I think he can always pull the lever on abortion, uh, and they will. Mm -hmm. But the that's a, the, is that part of democracy as well? You say the Republicans are trying to take your rights away from you as a woman. Uh, is that part of democracy? Probably is. I mean, it is a theme. It's a theme that he uh, has been successful campaigning on. And I think there's a, a great reason that he won 2020 is because, okay, there was a pandemic going on and I don't think Trump handled it particularly well. And that's ultimately, I think, what led to him winning. But uh, the, he hammered home that how he was this existential threat and he was a loose cannon. But uh, you can only hear the same record so many times and mm -hmm. yeah I think there is a real chance that he's going to have to change his messaging if he's going to have any hope of kind of regaining the momentum. Well Chris thank you so much for being here today. Yeah. You can get more reporting from Chris and the rest of the political team at WashingtonExaminer.com.